in China, in the small town of Wuhe, the Wu family celebrated the birth of a child. The child was a girl. A girl. What would become of her? In those days, girls were not sent to school, not considered smart as boys, and certainly not encouraged to be scientists. But Mama and Papa Wu did not feel that way. They believed girls should go to school and become anything they wanted to be. They knew their daughter would be smart and brave. That she would make a difference in this world. Papa named him Jian Xiong, which means courageous hero. Even before Wu Jian Xiong arrived in the world, Papa had quit his job as an engineer and opened a school just for girls. Mama wore wore out her shoes, trudging to every house in Wu He to urge families to educate their daughters. When Jian Xiong was ready, a school was waiting for her. Papa was the principal, and Mama was the teacher, teaching little girls to read and write and count. Papa and Mama were courageous too, as they showed their daughter the way. Soon enough, Jian Xiong had learned everything she could from her parents' school. She knew how to count and add, and to add. Subtract, multiply, divide. She knew how to read and write hundreds of Chinese words with their strong dots, angled lines, and wispy tails. Chen Xiong was ready for more. In the 1920s, the next closest girls' school was in the city of Suzhou. Fifty long miles of bumpy, dusty country roads away. She would have to live there. Far from her family, and only could only go home for winter and summer vacation. Mama wept, Papa worried, but they knew their daughter had to be brave and the world to grow. Chen Xiong knew it too, so off she went. The school offered two programs: teacher training and academic. Chen. Xiong picked the free teacher training program, but she picked into the academic program textbooks and saw that they covered so much more. Science wasn't just science; it was biology and chemistry and physics, all connected by the lovely language of mathematics. And oh, physics! Physics, the study of the very matter and energy around her, the study of things. That could be seen, felt, heat, sound, light, electricity, and motion, and of things too minuscule to be seen or felt, atoms, and even tinier parts of atoms. Physics captured her heart, like a seed that must fly far to flourish. Jian Xiong set forward once more in 1936. This time to Berkeley, California, thousands of miles across the ocean. She was going to continue studying the physics of atoms. Scientists understood atoms, but not completely. If people knew how atoms split, they could use them in new inventions and technologies. Maybe even help doctors treat sick people. She focused on beta decay, where a nucleus inside an atom broke in. Uh, opposite nucleus, an electron or positron, and a neutral. It was like opening one present and getting three different gifts inside. After California, Chen Jianxiong went to Columbia University in New York, where she continued to explore beta decay. She was careful. She was precise. She conducted experiment after experiment until she had a deeper understanding of beta decay just than just about anyone else. Her reputation grew, and physics who couldn't solve their own problems came to her for help. Scientist Iroko Fermi said that electrons should 
have faster speeds when they burst out of neutron during battle decay. He couldn't prove it. No one, nobody could. But Jian Xiong could. Because she understand battle decay so well, she knew what to look for. Because she was a such careful researcher, she was able to run a difficult experience that proved Fermi right. Many people thought that Jian Xiong should have won the Nobel Prize for this work, but she did not receive it. Next, Yang Zhengming and Li Zhengdao questioned something many scientists believed, that nature did not distinguish between left and right, a concept of symmetry called parity. They asked Jian Xiong to investigate. Because she had worked on parody in Battle Decay, she knew just what to do. To focus on the project, she even canceled a trip to China, a rare chance to see her parents for the first time since she had left home for the United States. Her hard work paid off. Her results proved them right for this Yang and Li, but not Jian Xiong won a Nobel Prize. Jian Xiong did not get the job she wanted either, because she was a woman, because she was Asian. Was she sad? Yes. Was she disappointed? Often. Was she discouraged? Occasionally. But she did not let those feelings stop her from doing what she loved. Because Papa always said, ignore the obstacles, just put your head down and keep walking forward. There was only one obstacle she cannot overcome. Because of World War II, the political unrest in China afterwards, and her focus on her work. Jian Xiong was not able to return to see her parents before they died. My heart was breaking. She wrote to a friend when she could not attend Papa's funeral. Still, in her new home in the United States, Jian Xiong continued on her courageous path. She fought prejudice against women and Asian and became a such exceptional physicist that the Smitherson magazine called her the first lady of physics research. And Newsweek declared her the queen of physics. And that's how a small girl from a faraway village in China went to school, proved herself as smart as any boy, learned to be a scientist, and became a 